What's up y'all, Tommy here. And today we're gonna to be talking about what are four things that I would do as soon as my credit hit around the good to excellent status, okay? And what I mean by that is once you break into the 700 club, probably closer to about 720-ish, this is the types of stuff that I would be thinking about doing that could help me uh, be able to make even more money and be able to have more money in my pockets, okay? So be sure that you stay tuned for all four tips. That way you know exactly what to do once you get to this point. Now the first thing that I would do would be dealing with any type of credit card balances I had. And what I mean by this is I would start transferring them to other credit cards, okay? Now that you have good credit, you are in a situation where you could be able to qualify for really great, you know, like zero APR credit cards and even credit cards that don't have any sort of uh, balance transfer fees associated with them. And what balance transfer fees are, it basically means that you can take your entire balance from one credit card and move it over to another one and not have to pay any type of fees. You know, usually banks would try to charge you just for doing that. They might charge you like 1%, 2%, things like that, or they might charge you a flat fee. Okay, but if you could find a card that has a 0% APR, you know, usually those are kind of like the incentive for you to sign up for the card. They might tell you like, hey, you get a 0% a uh, APR for a year or something, right? Or for six months, whatever it is. But if you can find that offer, then what you can actually do is you can transfer, a, do a balance transfer move. Let's say you had like $500 of debt on one credit card and you got approved for this new credit card. You can shift the debt over to that new credit card that way, it makes it easier for you to be able to pay off that balance. The reason why this is the first thing I would focus on is because of how high the interest is for credit cards. I mean, depending on how, what situation you're in or what kind of card you got, you could be paying upwards of 23, even I've seen as high as like 20, around the 27s and above in terms of percentage, okay? So you, this is the first thing that you wanna to try to take care of now that you have the good credit. You know, trying to find deals and things where you can shift debt over so you're not continually paying interest and you're able to pay it down a lot faster. Number two, the second thing that I would do if I was in a situation where I had just gotten to great credit, then what I would do is start working towards refinancing my house, okay? This is another thing that I think people, they kind of look at certain numbers and it doesn't look like it's much but if you look at the over the long term of the entire loan you will see that just by you doing a refinance right even getting a couple percentage points better than what you were getting uh previously in terms of interest rates that could have a huge impact on uh, how much you're paying monthly and even how much you're able to save in the long term now i have an example here and i'll throw it up on the screen as well for you guys to take a look at you know, let's say I, uh, for an example, let's say that you are looking to buy or you own a $300,000 home, okay? Your home's priced around 300,000 and you currently have an interest rate of 6%. So you're paying 6% interest and this is a 30 year uh, loan as well, okay? And you more around your payment amount would be around 1700, pretty much $1800. You'd be paying about $1800 a month for this house because you have a 6% interest rate. Okay, now let's say that you were able to refinance and get your interest rate slashed in half. So instead of a 6% interest rate, you are now down to a 3% interest rate. Okay, just by you being able to do that, you would be able to have a new monthly payment of $1,264. So what that means is you've pretty much shaved off uh, almost close to $600 that you were paying per month. Right, that's in extra interest that you would have been paying that now you no longer have to worry about paying. Right, and in the long term, uh, uh, in the long term, in terms of those thirty years, instead of you um, having to pay that six percent interest, now that you're down to three percent, you would end up saving one hundred and ninety-two thousand dollars in interest. Okay, insane, one hundred and ninety-two thousand dollars in interest. Like, think, just think in your mind right now, what would you be able to do with one hundred ninety-two thousand dollars? Okay, like, what what do you think that you'd be able to do? Right? Maybe you can use that to start a business. Maybe you could use that to you know, get another rental property right? or buy another house, upgrade your house, whatever it is. Maybe you could get a car with that, whatever you wanted to do. right? So that's why you always want to look at it, especially when they tell you the interest rates. It just seems like you're not saving much. But if you're in the opportunity or you have an opportunity where you, have a, um, you were able to improve your credit better than what you did when you first got your house, then this is, needs to be top of mind. You want to really be looking at refinancing, especially in today's current climate where the interest rates are so low. Okay, I've heard people even get as low as a 275 
in terms of the interest, okay? So that's definitely something that you'll wanna take a look at to see if um, if you can get that move down and try, that's something you probably wanna do as soon as you can, just to lock in a lower interest rate. Item number three, now the third thing that I would do would be I'd upgrade my credit cards, okay? So if I was using, let's say I had like secured cards or I had really lower tier cards, I would try to upgrade my cards to um, cards that have better uh, either bonus offers or just rewards points and different, you know, they just had better offers in general, right? Instead of you having maybe a pretty basic card if that's all you were qualifying for at the time, now you might be able to qualify for a really good cashback card. Maybe a card that, say, that gives you 2% cashback, 3% cash back whatever it is okay or you might be able to qualify for a card that has a really good uh, uh, bonus offer so maybe you if you spend let's say two thousand dollars in a, a three months or three thousand within three months you might get sixty thousand points which adds up to you getting a free trip to uh, Europe or something or free you know you're able to use that money to get a free vacation right so that's the way you want to look at it is now you want to try to upgrade your credit cards and i'm not saying that you need to upgrade credit cards just just so you can use them and max them out or whatever i'm saying it more in the sense that use those credit cards doing what's called credit card churning okay that's a term where people use the credit card to they pretty much put their expenses on a credit card but it's all, all expenses that they normally would pay with their debit card so all they're doing is they're running the expenses through that credit card and immediately paying it off and that way what you end up doing is you end up getting a bunch of rewards points right a bunch of um, rewards points cash back points whatever it is that way you are pretty much making money off of activities that you are already having to do so that's another great option something to look at especially uh, if you're in a situation like i said where you have a lower tier card and you want to move up to a higher tier this is something that'd be great especially if you just got good credit so the last one number four is gonna be getting cheaper car insurance so it's kind of crazy a lot of people don't know about this or didn't realize this but car insurance companies what they actually do and actually insurance companies in general majority of them do this but they actually pull your credit okay the reason why they do that is because they use that to decide how much to charge you for car insurance the idea being that if you have bad credit right bad credit the way lenders look at it is that if you have bad credit, it means that you're not being financially responsible, right? And that's kind of the same way that the car insurance looks at it. The car insurance companies say, hey, if he is not being financially uh, responsible, right? If Tommy's not being financially responsible, then it's more likely than that he's not gonna be responsible with his car as well. So we should charge him more just to offset that, just to be sure. Okay, that's the kind of the way they look at it. Now, obviously, we don't know their exact formula. We, I can't tell you like, oh, if you have a 600 credit score, you're gonna pay an extra $50 as opposed to having a 700, right? No one knows the exact formula, but we do know that they actually use that to decide how much to charge you, okay? So if you were able, if you have had car insurance for quite a while uh, with the same company, right, you just been renewing, and you end up fixing your credit, and maybe you got it when you were in the lower 500s or something, and now you're in, 600s, 700s, 800s, or excuse me, yeah, 750s, 800s, whatever it is, then you might wanna just try to get quotes from other uh, car insurance companies to see because it, it more than likely will be a situation where you're able to get an even better rate and it really just comes down to you having better credit, okay? So I think that's something that's gonna be huge for you guys, just finding ways to be able to minimize your expenses. That way you're saving more, you're keeping more in your pocket, and it puts you in a better position to be able to achieve whatever you have set forth or in, in your life, right? Whatever goals you're trying to reach. So if you have, whether it's financial goals, eventually you wanna own a house, or maybe you want to you know, take a vacation or even start a business. This is gonna help you be able to have more money that you're keeping in your pocket, as opposed to just giving it out to these companies, banks, insurance companies, whatever it is. And now you can actually use that for whatever you wanna use it for in life, okay? So again, guys, this is pretty much the gist of this video. If you want more tips on how to be able to fix your credit, I shot a whole comprehensive video on how to fix your credit, uh, step-by-step, step, which I'm gonna link down below, as well as a bunch of other videos for specific situations so whether you have hard inquiries collections accounts uh, late payments whatever it is i'm going to link all those videos down below in the description so check those out that way you can figure out how to go about fixing your credit uh, in all different aspects of it okay so that's going to be it for this video guys make sure you throw a like on this video if you enjoyed it and make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of my future videos Alrighty, guys i'll see you at the next one